Well, I've been on dialysis for going on four years now. I was a, an auto mechanic for the county. Worked there 17 years, and I got a sore on my foot, and they couldn't heal it up, so I had to take my leg off. I had to quit work. Thanks to this man, more than 1.2 million people are alive today because of kidney dialysis. Raleigh Robinson is one of them. I can keep living, keep going, enjoy my life. Dr. Willem Kolf, 2003 recipient of the Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize, invented the first kidney dialysis machine, or artificial kidney, in 1945. Built out of sausage casings and part of a Ford automobile water pump, it was the first artificial organ ever developed. Even more remarkable, Dr. Kolf invented it in Nazi-occupied Holland when scientific creativity was a risky proposition. I don't hesitate to try something that most other people will not try if I see a possibility. In September 1945, the artificial kidney saved its first patient. The first patient who was unquestionably saved by dialysis was Maria Schafstad, the surgeon who received her, referred her to me, and she was really snoring. She was comatose. And you couldn't speak to her, could not contact her. And after 10 or 11 hours of dialysis, I bent over her and said, Mrs. Schafstad, can you hear me? And she very slowly opened her eyes and said, I am going to divorce my husband. <laughs> and she did. And she did. And she lived. She, lived. she was already uh, 68 years old when this happened. She lived eight more years in good health. In 1950, Kolf and his family emigrated from Holland to Cleveland, Ohio, where he became head of the Department of Artificial Organs and professor of clinical investigation at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. It was there that he began work on an artificial heart. According to Dr. Garabed Egnoyan, former president of the National Kidney Foundation, one in nine million Americans have some sort of kidney disease. Of them, many will eventually become dependent on dialysis. If you go through the calculations, about uh, 80,000 new people every year who end up getting on dialysis. And uh, the life of all these individuals can be directly attributed to the discovery of Dr. Kolf of the dialysis machine. Dr. Kolf has long been a pioneer of medical technology. In addition to the artificial kidney and heart, he's had a role in the development of an artificial ear and an electronic artificial eye. In 1968, Dr. Kolf began work on the artificial eye with the help of a young man named Bill Dobell. No problem to get blind volunteers. Every blind man wanted to, to cooperate. And the first patient who received where they had completed the social field looked out of the window and said, I see a car. I would like to drive it. And he said, go ahead, try it. <laughs> so he went up. He found his way to the car. He went inside, and he could drive it. And... He could not drive backwards because he could not uh, use the rear view mirror, but he could stick his head out of the window and then he could also drive it backwards. Presently, three people, before and totally blind, have been able to drive uh, automobiles in a parking lot, private property, slowly, and all kinds of mannequins were put in the parking lots and they haven't killed one yet. <laughs> Today at 92 years old, Dr. Kolf lives in a retirement home where he directs laboratories across the world on his other inventions, including an artificial lung. The lives of more than 20 million people are sustained or significantly improved by organ transplant technology. It's for this impressive body of work that Dr. Kolf is known as the father of artificial organs. And it's for this that he was awarded the 2003 Russ Prize in Washington, D.C. on February 18th. Fritz and Dolores Russ established the award in 1999 through a multi-million dollar endowment to Ohio University. The Russ Prize recognizes outstanding engineering achievement that improves the human condition. The Russes grew up in Jackson, Ohio, and both attended Ohio University. 
Fritz Rusk graduated in 1942 with a Bachelor of Science degree in electrical engineering. Together, the Russes set a course that would forge new frontiers, bringing space-age technology into the medical arena. In 1955, they founded Systems Research Laboratories in Dayton, Ohio. In 1987, SRL, one of the largest employers in Dayton, merged with Arvin Industries. For Fritz Russ, the Russ Prize is the cap to a remarkable career in electrical engineering. I want uh, the engineering profession to be recognized for its contribution to society. And uh, I want the Ohio University Co Russ College of Engineering to be a leader in the, in the world of engineering schools. For Dr. Willem Kalf, the Russ Prize, with its $500,000 award, means he can continue to save lives. I'm starting anew. Um, I live in a one-room studio apartment, but I have friends that help me. The Russ Prize, um, for example, will make it possible to follow through on this wearable artificial lung. For Dr. Ignoyan, Dr. Kolf is an inspiration. The enthusiasm and the energy that he exudes even at his present advanced stage where he remains active and inspires others. For Raleigh Robinson, the artificial kidney means quite simply life. And if he ever had the chance to meet Dr. Kolf? I thank him for it. It saved a lot of people's lives. 